days and um, I'd like to first order of business call the meeting to order seeing as a it's 4 30 um, so we're in session the second item is approval of minutes has anyone had a chance to look over the minutes is there a motion to approve I'll move to approve okay is there a second okay all in favor any adjustments anyone okay all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. The next item is the public appearances for non-agenda items. I've got a non-agenda item, if you don't mind. That'd be great. Uh, I would like to introduce four of our most recent hires uh, to the Police and Fire Commission. I know you guys uh, like to periodically see some faces, so you can associate those with the names that I've presented over the course of time. I may have another officer joining us. Uh, he's out on a call right now as well. But um, we have uh, Matt. Ariana, Olivia, and Brett. Uh, these are our Police and Fire Commission members, uh, Tom Thorson, Jeff Standiford, Jim Wheeler, Brownwin Baldwin, and Rosa Agulu. So if you guys want to just maybe give a brief uh, introduction and background for the PFC, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've appeared before me. I have. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Olivia Munson. Um, I just graduated from Carthage College with a bachelor's in criminal justice. I'm originally from the Chicagoland area, so I've slowly migrated my way north. Um, and I've always been interested in, in law enforcement. I've completed a couple law enforcement internships with um, one in Milwaukee at DCI. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not. Um, one at a medical examiner's office and one at a prison as well. Um, but I'm very excited to uh, start the academy on Monday. I'm very excited to start my career. Okay. My name is Ariane Ridgely. I grew up in Madison. I went to UW Madison for my undergrad. And then I decided to torture myself with more school in New York. Um, <laughs> and I did internships there at the medical examiner's office in New York City and in New Jersey, where I did um, forensic anthropology and death scene investigation. And then I moved to Portland, Oregon, where I became a police officer. And I've been a police officer there for about ten and a half years. Matt Overstreet. I'm from St. Charles, Illinois. Not actually too far away from where Olivia's from. Um, uh, went to college at University of Iowa. Have a bachelor's in business management. Um, was working there for the grounds crew at the university, so just mowing grass and stuff, which was a good time. Um, and then. I went to academy, I graduated last May, went to academy in August, and now I'm ready to start field training, so. Yeah, so Matt and Brett recently graduated from the academy at Madison College. Uh, that was right before Christmas. Uh, and then uh, Ariana and Olivia started with us on Monday as well, so all four of them are doing a two week, well, one week in Olivia's case, but the others are in a two week orientation period. Uh, and then the three of them will begin field training, and then as Olivia mentioned, she'll head off to the academy at Madison College on Monday. Welcome. Yeah. Well, on, on behalf of the commission, welcome, and you're with a great police department. Having lived here for 32 years, <laughs> I can say that I've seen firsthand. It's a very good department, so we're really great to great to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hopefully, that wasn't too painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to ask unanimous consent uh, if we could move up discussion. I'm going to have to leave at uh, 5:15. And if we're not done, Rosie, you're going to have to uh, take over, um, just so you know. Um, I asked him, he asked him to take uh, item number seven up, just so to make sure we can cover that. Um, is, there, is that okay with everyone? Okay. Um, yes. So that item is uh, basically part of the discussion for setting and confirming our 2020 <coughs> PFC meeting schedule. And I've made some contacts with some folks just to say, is the second uh, Wednesday okay? Is the is the third Wednesday okay? What you know would be better? Um, just so we have, I have a conflict on 
this and that I have to rush to the police and fire commission. And we used to meet at four o'clock sometimes, and then it didn't have a problem. But I don't want to change anything unless you know it really benefits everyone. I guess the most important would be the public. I don't know that it's going to make a difference to the public if we meet on <laughs> the second or, or third. Um, but that after that, the the chiefs uh, and Sarah. Um, but what it, how does that work uh, for everyone else? Is third okay or second better? Or? I only have a couple more meetings left, so <laughs> um, I'll defer to all of you. Um, it's or, fine. It, either way, it's fine with me. Third week is fine with me. Okay. Third okay, and then I'll uh, wait to hear from uh, if that's the case because one of the you know items we'll have is that you know if if people have agenda items you know send them to me and Sarah and the chiefs and you know, together we make sure we, we're covering what agendas. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so the fourth item is report from the police department. Yes. So I will distribute. These are the reports. You don't have them. So you will see that as of the typing of this report, which was last week, uh, we should still show two vacancies. Those two vacancies have been filled as of Monday with uh, Olivia and Ariana. So uh, there's a slight adjustment now with this week. Uh, you'll put us at. Uh, all positions being filled currently, there'll be zero vacancies, a total of uh, five in field training and one at the Law Enforcement Academy. Uh, two are still on restricted duty, although one of them is returning from an uh, a FMLA leave uh, yet this month and potentially the other one will be also returning from a medical leave um, or restricted duty yet this month too. So. Our total number of positions on field remains at eight, regardless of how you work your way across the column there. But there has been some adjustments since I put this together. Okay. Any questions at all? Great. Well, thank you. I, I guess one thought, and this is probably something for the city overall, and that is tracking the amount of people that are on medical leave. You know, if we ever run into a situation where we've got a I could, you know, kind of sort of flu situation that really wipes out, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, how I don't expect that to happen very often, but, you know, where you have higher than normal vacancies. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Any thoughts on that? No, no. Just the, okay. Um, next item is going into closed session. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion that pursuant to section 19.85 sub 1 sub C of the Wisconsin statutes that the commission move into closed session for the purpose of considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, more specifically to discuss the resignation of a police officer. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's in second. So what we need to do is affirmatively, you know, take a vote and show our hands or something that, you know, sh shows that we voted to go into this. It's unanimous. We're going to closed session. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We voted to go back into open session. Um, and uh, anything from the chief on that? Okay. The next item will be a report from the fire department. Yeah, so Chief Paul Marker isn't able to be here today. He's um, pursuing um, some of his uh, college education. He's finishing up out of state right now. So he provided a staffing report. So I did attach that to the agenda today. Hopefully you had a chance to look at it. We added the demographics of the staff um, per request last PFC meeting. So um, I don't have anything else beyond that to share with you at this time. Okay. Any questions that Sarah might be able to? Okay. Where is the demographic you say you have had? Yeah, so it's part of the packet. So I just gave oh, you okay. the agenda. Chief um, Brecklin has a copy of it for you. Okay, the next item will be item number six, which is discussion and input for sessions three and four of the PFC rules and regulations. Um, before we kick off, I want to thank you know, Sarah and everyone else for, you know, the current data, or not data, current um, 
update. And I think it makes sense to you know just keep on chipping these off, you know, mm -hmm. two um, or so a meeting, um, get everyone's uh, input. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, to the benefit of the, those watching, we're going to go back on to number three public appearances for non agenda. Okay, Chief. So, uh, we kind of hit the jackpot with having four new officers in orientation, plus uh, Logan Enke here was hired uh, May yeah. of last year, if I remember correctly. He's about to wrap up his field training process. He's got a couple of weeks left, but he was here uh, on training tonight, so I asked him to stop up as well. Uh, so this is Logan Enke, this is Tom Thorson, Jeff Stanford, Jim Wheeler, Bronwyn Baldwin, and Rosa Andrew. Nice so if you wouldn't mind just giving us a, just a brief introduction and background, we'll have you in and out in no time, Lori. <laughs> um, nice to meet all of you. Um, from Green Bay, did my undergrad at Platteville, um, did some fire day mess while I was there. Um, internship with the uh, Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation. Uh, came to Madison, actually moved to Fishburg, um, completed my master's um, in public affairs from Madison in the, uh, about a week after I got hired. <laughs> um, and I've been here with the Academy of the Day, the Day the Sheriff's Department, um, started field training in September. About to wrap it up, I'm looking forward to having my own cup. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Until that very first call, you look over to right. the bachelor's side and say, man, I wish I had that. Right. <laughs> So thank right. you. Thank you. Welcome and thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. I think it's good to, you know. Yeah, we're really trying to get folks to work their way through as they're here. It's always hard when they're on the third shift to have them come in for those meetings. So. Well, and it, it's a good reminder for all of us too to say, you know, you know, citizen based mm -hmm. and not try to avoid the politics as much as we can in. in uh, you know what happens in police and fire decisions. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're back on rules again. Thanks everyone for uh, all the input so far. I think we're taking up sections three and four today. Yep, and, so, we are, and then Jeff Stanford uh, sent me his version of three and four where he made some edits. So thank you so much for sending any edits ahead of time, and um, we can talk about them here too. But that's what we have up today is uh, your version of three and four. Certainly, it's this conversation. I just oh, feel like sure. I just feel like I just feel like I just feel like I just feel like I just the no, it's, it's a, the one thing, why am I looking at, I'm looking at the old, was it where, was, did we talk about the uh, 303? I'm okay, I see. Okay. So here, and I mentioned this um, this morning when I talked to Sarah, do we want to reaffirm here at the very beginning again mm -hmm. on the hiring that we're going to work um, as an objective for the police and fire to hire a diverse workforce, um, you know, to, that represents the city and, and we, that we support diversity, equity, and inclusion? We've got that as a mission, but I, th I just, uh, just given my view, thinking that the more we can reinforce, you know, that hey, we want to do this, we want to, we want to actually, you know, do things in our in the culture of the police and fire department, and you know, with the city hiring, to make sure we're focusing on that. So I thought of adding that. It's not up here right now because I just mentioned it. I probably should have yeah. sent it ahead of time, but um, that was one thought I had. Um, and any others on 301, 302, or 303? I guess we should take that out. I mean, do people think that that's a good idea? We should just add that as you know, number one or as part of the title? Yeah, seems I think like, that is a good like idea. It seems like reinforcing that is a good mm -hmm. idea to me. I agree. I think that's I good. Don't, you know, as far as where we put it, we could put it as number one if we want it as a general mm -hmm. statement starting. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. The, the other thought that I had is do we want to say anything about um, and thank goodness the city does this, you know, w you know, I guess it would not be appropriate as I think I wouldn't say it. I was talking about we want to make sure we have a harassment-free workplace, <laughs> but that's, that belongs somewhere else, so I apologize mm -hmm. for even 
as I was reading this, I was writing notes. Um, any other thoughts on either of these three sections? Actually, there's four. I think we have to go up a little bit more. Well, we talk about job descriptions, um, and I know we had copies of them mm -hmm. in them. I was curious what your thoughts are if we didn't have those, because I mean, we're always continually updating our job descriptions, so I worry about us putting them in here, and then if we go to change, whether it's qualifications, responsibilities, tweaking anything. Are job descriptions posted somewhere? Yes, so we have job descriptions for every position and then job classification, uh, class specifications. And but they are being posted somewhere. So if this is going to be a public document, I guess is my mm -hmm. question, are those posted publicly? Yeah, yes, yeah. so they're on so our they're website. A link? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking too. A link to the website where we can mm -hmm. access that? Okay. I have a question. Go ahead, Rosa. Can, I ha can you give me an example of when we as the commission mm -hmm. would change the qualification of employment? And would it be something that would come as a suggestion from you guys? Because I, 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 th I thought of this, you know, I saw on the news, um, I don't know if we want to do it or not, it's a discussion to have with the chief and all of us. State Patrol has now switched to where somebody can be working to graduate in order to be eligible to hire. Mm -hmm. They don't have the 60 credits yet, I think. Um, so that would be an example of something, again, do we want to have that, you know, I, it, it's, I think it's good to have a, a base and then to be able to go higher, um, mm -hmm. but they've also then, they've taken a step that says, you know what, we're going to get people who are in the process of doing that just to make, because we might make the pool bigger. So I got a little overzealous actually and I reworked that section so later on in the document. You don't, have to, you don't have to go to it right now. It's <laughs> down, down the road. The only reason I did that was because I was, I was reading through this and the, essentially the first thing it says is that it makes reference to go exhibit A and exhibit B down the road, right? So mm -hmm. then exhibit A and exhibit B. Um, and it does look like the core, the, the statutes that, or the, I'm sorry, the sheriff's board or what is it? And, well, the, the you know what, there's training and standard. What happens is, is the Department of Justice has training standards for people for eligibility for uh, being hired as police officers. Right, there's an organization that sets forth those. Right. Just right. The minimum right. qualifications. The minimum right. qualifications. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I reworked that, essentially, I just said we should just link to that because right. that's essentially the. And then we can add anything below that that is by, mm -hmm. by those same mm -hmm. rules anything that we want to add that we want specific mm -hmm. for the city of Fitchburg. Correct. So for instance, if they say somebody needs to be 18, should we raise that to 21? Mm -hmm. Or I'm, I'm not saying that right we should. I'm, right. Just saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like as an example though, so we can set, and in, in exactly what you were talking about, should we suggest that we want to have somebody have an associate's degree? Mm -hmm. Or just working towards an associate's degree or 60 credits or 30 credits or above and beyond whatever the minimum is? The reason you have these is you want to be able to attract the best workforce possible and what do you need to get that. And sometimes you have to have some flexibility there based on what the pool is looking like. So, um, you know, I think, first of all, don't apologize for being overzealous because it helps us all out. <laughs> you know, it, it really does. Um, the thing that I thought about on A, because I went to the Section A then, mm -hmm. you know, and one of the things I started marking up, well, wait a minute, we're not, we don't talk about that we require a psychological exam, you know. Um, you know, it's not in there, and it's like, well, it probably should be, you know, that kind of thing. So I'll just offer my thoughts on it, if you, if you don't, don't mind. I think I would keep it general, the authority general with the Police and Fire Commission. Obviously, as we've talked about, for police officer and mm -hmm. can't speak to the fire service, but clearly the law enforcement standards board is setting the minimum qualifications for a police officer. And as Jeff mentioned, the, the commission would retain the authority to modify that and potentially increase that threshold if they so desired. Uh, we always post our jobs. Uh, the last couple of postings have been at the minimum qualification uh, that's necessary. So that does allow somebody who is working towards that associate's degree because the state gives five years to get 60 college credits is it. Um, so they don't even require the degree in order uh, for minimum qualifications. Mm -hmm. so, so we have already adopted that level of standard. And I think what the commission can do also, and I'll back up just slightly, is that the position descriptions are obviously gonna be reviewed or created by HR, but also potentially reviewed by legal as well to make sure that they're in, in compliance. So 
I think that where the commission fits in then is obviously if they want to modify standards, they can do so, but perhaps when we do a posting or request approval to do a process, we would submit the position description to the PFC as part of that process mm -hmm. of, of getting it approved. Um, so then that way, if there was anything that was going to be changed, you would at least have the opportunity at that point in time, or maybe the commission would say, annually in whatever month, we're just gonna take a look at the positions within the police department, for instance, and if there's any changes we'd like to suggest, now would be a good time. Because it would also help, you know, from a, a, a timeline standpoint, instead of, you know, if I come to you in two months and say we need to do a hiring process, <coughs> and the commission wants to make a modification, to the qualifications or the position description, then we'd need to go back to HR and back to legal and those sorts of things. It could potentially add some more timelines. So maybe, you know, an annual review might be in order. Yeah. We might that, want to do an annual review of the, I mean, mm -hmm. not just that, but of the document itself, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe annual for those because that is a more regular sure. process and a biannual or, or whatever for the entire document. Mm -hmm. yeah. And part of it might get into, and this is between the, two of you as I see it, but it may be something that might be good to have an annual review from the standpoint. What if there's a new, brand new type of position that law enforcement realizes they need, but you don't have it? Mm -hmm. You know, some other city has started instituting some sort of, you know, special specialty detective, you know, mm -hmm. area or something. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever we have, I think we'd want to be able to kind of cover that so that, you know, when we look to hire, these are the expertise sure. between the chief and us, these are the things that we want to hire and test for. So. Or I, go ahead. I, I, would, I want the rules to reflect exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. And I'm having mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, when I read it the way it is, I'm just questioning, well, when do we do this? Mm -hmm. Who comes up with the idea of the review? That's why I like mm -hmm. the, the suggestion to have a time mm -hmm. frame where we would do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then leave it general, but with that specific specificity, mm -hmm. so that uh, it reflects what we actually do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we can write that right into the document. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can have a, we can have a, an additional section. We can place that wherever we want, where it just says operating procedures in regards to reviewing this manual mm -hmm. or something like that. And then mm -hmm. just the first meeting of every year, pick, pick a time, right? Right. And this is what we do, and the second one, this is. What and I think that's very beneficial in particular because, like, I didn't know that these were needed updating, you know, mm -hmm. and I had been on the commission already three years, you know, because then here it was you know, 10 and years. And I like so. that because with the, my former department, when we had a position that opened up, we were looking at the last time we did an equity analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. One wasn't done in the last few years, usually it was a lot of years. Yeah. You know, that's when we did an equity analysis on a position and then we Mm -hmm. okay. So like something annually or Okay. For this particular section, I have some issues with the wording, and I apologize. I didn't get these to you ahead of time either. Okay. Work has been crazy busy. Um, but um, when it says in there, I know we had discussed this during the last meeting from time to time, over and over, that's not necessary. I, I mean, it shows that the commission shall determine the qualifications, but we need to say, what does from time to time mean? We need to... Um, yeah to uh, actually state like um, state with specificity, like you said, to um, what it means. I mean, are we going to do any? I don't know if we need to even, I think you could yeah, just yeah, yeah, I was fine with it, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just delete it, yeah. yeah. Although, see, my concern, because I thought about just deleting it, mm -hmm. but my concern with just deleting it means that it won't be happening, uh, like being reviewed. I'd like it to, do you want it to say on an annual basis time. or so are we going to include a sentence saying that i don't know if we necessarily have to say annually i don't know if that's what everyone's deciding but i think mm -hmm. you know we do have the power to determine the qualifications for a position in the um, police service and fire service um and then the current qualifications where it goes on for set forth in exhibit b i would hyperlink that yeah and mm -hmm. then um when it says the next sentence from time to time, the commission may change the qualifications. Um, I would remove from time to time there also. Mm -hmm. And I would just include, and this is just my two cents, I would include a sentence saying that um, the commission reserves the right to um, review these on a, 
basis determined by the, um, you know, that we can review them. I mean, I think it needs, sorry, I'm just throwing words out there, not actually <laughs> words to be used. Yeah, right. yeah I'm, just, um, I'm, I'm putting your thoughts in. Yeah, but I mean, I would just have a sentence there just saying that, um, you know, the commission may review these on a basis of their choosing or something like that, where we're not tied down to an annual review, we're not tied down to anything, because what if the commission changes and you want to do something else, mm -hmm. but something showing that you can review. Go ahead. Jim, I do think it should at least say uh, okay. for annual review mm -hmm. and then reserve the right that we can change it any time, okay. but I think we yeah. should Just actually so set it that okay. as an annual review so we don't forget it. Okay, <laughs> I agree. Okay. And, and I would think that most years it's not going to take real long to do that we just ask for does anybody see what needs you know update so. yeah so for the the format for that and just personally my style i would just take out the from time to time from both sentences i'd add an additional sentence that says that um these qualifications may re will be or shall be however we want to phrase it reviewed annually at minimum something like that okay. Go ahead, Jeff. So there's really two portions to this qualification <coughs> section. Then. There's the increments at when we're going to review and update them. Right. And then there's the actual qualifications for review or for improvement. And so right, you have to logically we should just probably break that up. I don't know if that oh, needs to be I two I different know sections or if that just oh. or we could have bullet points or That's whatever true. we could do either way. But those two things should probably be distinct just because they're two. That's true. If you want to not include annually, you can include one sentence that just says they'll be reviewed. If you want to include annually, you're going to have to make up follow the determine the qualifications instead of change the qualifications. Okay. Rosa? I have a question, something that came to mind. Do we, this review, is this something that's going to come up um, as a suggestion from the police or fire departments? Or how do we come up to, to make the decision that we need the review? Um, well, the thing that we may want to do, I mean, just to, I think, address your question, at least what I would potentially suggest, is at the, you know, you just maybe even state at the June meeting of, you know, each year, mm -hmm. um, something to that effect, so that it's, the May meeting will be the first meeting for a number, or for a new commissioner, at least if we follow what the statutes say, which I hope we do. <laughs> you know, so then the, the question, you know, is okay, you don't want to just throw something at somebody, right? For, so let's give them a month or two. And, so I mean, I to, just off the top of my head, June. I, I do really like the, just coming in in the last couple of years, uh, it would have been great to have this document in the first couple of months. Right. I didn't know it existed until I, I didn't uh, either. four or five years, or four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it would be great. And I think having them read through that and be a part of, I don't think after, hopefully after this first round, there's not a lot, right, kind of mm -hmm. on a basis. But I do think that, that that, even as a checkpoint and an introduction, yeah. I think are both good things. Yeah. So I, I like having it right after in that yeah, June July meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I'm still, <coughs> that there's something missing for me here, and it's how we connect the commission with the police and the fire in, in, in this review. Does it come, do we say that, because I'm assuming the police and fire, they are directly involved in the process of, of the, the job itself, and mm -hmm. they're the ones who actually see what needs to change, what needs to be reviewed, what needs to be different. So do we do it do we say something to reflect that we, in conjunction with, with, I don't know if we need to, or at the direction of, or as the suggestion of, and I don't know, Jim, and you, how you feel about it. I just feel like um, that, there, to me, there needs to be a connection that shows that that's part of the, that's how the process will be. Well, I think your suggestion is a good one in that it may capture what we should be doing, which is, we should be working with the chiefs and HR, you know, uh, on that, you know, so that when we have that annual review or June or not, we've had the chiefs and us all have that discussion if there needs to be anything. But I don't know if that is capturing it, exactly. It what sounds you're... like what people want is more of like a sua sponte type review where um, the commission just takes it up on their own every year. 
but I like the in conjunction with because it will be the chiefs giving some type of input into it. Is that what you were thinking? Right. We cannot do it away from because, I mean, honestly, am I going to be sitting all at home looking at the right. process and knowing what needs to be changed, what needs to be mm -hmm. improved, or, or whatever? No. I mean, that has to come from them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. is it more like we're trying to just think of a process to make it formal? Because I think we already do that when we mm -hmm. talk about different changes. And yeah. mm -hmm. Just not annual. Yeah. is in here. We're talking about right. it. Right. Not at other meetings, but you know, how do we put that to kind of I, formalize it yeah, in a document? I, I appreciate what you're saying. I think on a practical level, I can't imagine this commission not doing that. So it just it wouldn't, make, it wouldn't right. make any sense, really. Um, but the way I, I we have it, I mean, doesn't say we need to precisely. And I so I think that right. that's that, that's both of your points, and I think that that's, mm -hmm. that's valid. I do think though the commission is an independent body, and I think that we have an obligation to go out and look at even if that's requesting the information through HR. So yeah. give me five other police departments, um, current. Um, job qualifications, give me five of their actual job descriptions. Mm -hmm. And we should be analyzing some of that to see if there are things, right? Mm -hmm. And Chief has mm -hmm. tons of stuff to do, and maybe it's, mm -hmm. you know, like, so that is a role that we can play and that we can have a dialogue based on that. And maybe that really should be the process, right? Mm -hmm. We get examples from other places and bring in information ourselves, see if there is any in new, essential qualifications that are used, people are using standardized across the board, mm -hmm. and then, Beyond that, have a conversation with the chiefs uh, to determine whether or not we want to actually implement something mm -hmm. like that in Pittsburgh. Good Great suggestion. Idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's your suggestion. I just sort of flushed it out. <laughs> 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 well, but again, I think early on, you know, and I, I appreciate Bruno Russo, you know, reinforcing this. And we got to make it so that it reads yep. and everybody understands it. So, and so maybe we should have a section um, or mm -hmm. portion of this where. If we're going to, I guess, getting back to my point, I think that there is a, a review and change of qualifications, and then there's the actual qualifications that are standard right now. Mm -hmm. And I think we should break those off, given what we're talking about now, because if we're not just going to have an annual review and have it be a sentence or two, and we're going to have it actually be a process that probably merits its own. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we should probably have a second. What, one of the things, I think just to clarify too, we're going to be making these changes, you know, today it's section three and four, mm -hmm. and then we're going to do five and six. I think we actually are adding a, a seven, you know, which, which is the disciplinary or the citizen complaint process. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so that's in there. And, but before, we're going to go back through this, you know, maybe at that meeting that we do the, <coughs> the complaint process. And then we're going to give it to the city, you know, city attorney mm -hmm. to review first, and then take it to the, the departments of the public. Let the city, you know, maybe the, your uh, mm -hmm. personnel commission know about it too, yep. you know, and as well as, and then basically see if there's a citizen input, you know, mm -hmm. if they have any thoughts, and then finally, at least, it's it's going to be several months down the road, but I think by systematically taking this trying to get it into the best shape we can, mm -hmm. we'll be a lot better off. So. Um, three, do you have everything you need there? Yep, yep. Okay, Jeff, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. um, anything on the process? So that top section talks about like, posting in the newspaper or, or in the general area or whatnot. And I, I guess I just don't know if that's, I don't know if that's relevant, or, or, you know, relatable anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I rewrote that and we do whatever we want with that. But I, I do think that we lean on human resources to do mm -hmm. that advertising for us to come up with things like Indeed mm -hmm. and those sort of newer um, methods of uh, attracting people. Mm -hmm. So. I think just keeping with current industry standards and mm -hmm. putting that on you, unfortunately. Yeah, no, uh, that's But I think that that's the role. So. Yeah. Uh, there was something I also put an incomplete application, which could be, is that there or I'm not? Um, Any misrepresentation when I'm, okay, oh, so, okay. so well, right, if they have an incomplete application, shall, that shall be cause for a rejection or shall be returned to the applicant for correction? Is that something we, 
one to include there? Yeah, what happens now? We don't do that right now. So if somebody applies and they don't fill out their application completely, um, we use the information that they provided and we still move them along in the process. I mean, it depends. I mean, you typically don't have too huge of omissions. I mean, you get the gist of everything. But I mean, if some, we're not as strict as some employers are in terms of throwing out their application. I don't know, maybe see maybe cause mm -hmm. for uh, mm -hmm. disqualification. I mean, okay. Shell is, I think that's going to be right. excluded. It, 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 <laughs> because, well, <laughs> and part of that may get to what was really missed. Was it trivial or was it really big? And so, um, <laughs> you know, from the standpoint, so it may make sense. But one thing, you know, my mind is reading this, I just got triggered on the issue, and this is really a legal HR issue, but I think we want in there. You know, we, we, we say that we're gonna have uh, psychological, we're gonna have the medical. We wanna make sure that's all done so that it's protected the way it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and I assume that that's the case. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to assume anything. Protected in the way it should be. Well, but by that I mean, okay. So if somebody has a psychological. Who has? Does another agency? Hey, I want to see your. You know, we mm -hmm. want to make sure that that's all mm -hmm. spelled out. We, we basically follow whatever the current status of the rules on, because um, people who applied, their name that they applied is a public record. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you got it. You got it. But then you get into some of these what I would call more sensitive areas of background checks and, and other things. Um, so I just want to make sure that you know we, police and fire, and the department, the city, are everything. I don't know that we need to go into that. No, I think here. you do what you did with what Jeff did with current industry standard. You just yeah. want to ensure that the departments are following you know legal and best practices right. as it relates to HR. Yeah. yeah. And I guess I, I think that on some level there's a difference between what we're responsible for and what the city is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the city, like it, it's an interesting question actually for the attorney, because we are saying, by mm -hmm. this document we're saying, provide a psychological examination, provide a written examination. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the implications of that are on the back end. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know all of them anyways, mm -hmm. that's not an HR person. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I assume, <laughs> that may be wrong way, mm -hmm. uh, that that is not our purview, which but I don't think that mm -hmm. it is. So, but maybe finding out exactly where those distinctions lie, but I, I tend to agree though, industry standards is what HR does. It's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a good phrase. Okay. Question. Okay, Rosa? When, when people are um, <clears throat> removed from the process, do they get notified as to why? Yes, we always send regret notices out to everybody. And the reason why? What was it? What was wrong? Or I mean, that? sometimes it's pretty general. You know, it's they, they didn't score high enough to get to the interview stage, or they interviewed but weren't selected for hire. So I mean, it's not always um, specific detail. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but we always let people know the outcome of their of all the steps in the process. Okay. So. Nature of selection process. Yeah, that time to time drives me crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get rid of it then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Shell, establish criteria from time to time. Yeah. Well, isn't this the same as qualification? It's criteria and qualifications very okay. different. I guess my question is just sort of prior about that section. Is that something they even do? So the, yes. The, I mean, I, I, I'm saying yes to what you're saying. Okay. Um, the, the commission shall establish criteria for selecting among applicants for positions. It seems like the chief consensus with the list. Yes. And HR does the back end. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, yeah. although, so, although the chief usually comes to us and says, this is the what I'm going to. These are the steps so I'm proposing. I'm proposing, yeah, and then yeah, we yeah. approve that step. Mm -hmm. I guess, I, but does this really represent what we have? You know, I, I, do we need to change that to be more of a button board? The commission mm -hmm. should it be approved criteria rather than established criteria, right? Because we don't really establish criteria. But you mm -hmm. approve it. Yes, we definitely do do that, right? right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Essentially, come in, mm -hmm. give us information, make the yeah. case, and right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do we want to use the word in conjunction again, and, or something to that effect? Or, sure. or you can just change established to approve. So that it's, we, we know it's not mm -hmm. us doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You may.
may want to leave the word establish in there. You may want to prove and or establish. I mean, mm. because yeah. what if the commission identifies something through your benchmarking and connections, if you will, or interests, or, in, or you read something and you want to you, you want to at least have the authority or at least the ability to have the conversation to say, well, should we add this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that is probably good to say approve and establish. Yeah. I um, guess, so my question over to the right, too, was I don't know exactly what our statutory mm -hmm. authority slash allocations are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't go back and I didn't read what it was for the section. Are we supposed to be established in that? And it's not to be. Is the process we currently have not what we're supposed to be doing? Oh, no, I, I, I think we're following the statute pretty much, but it's not spelled out very much is the, is okay. the issue. And I think we're going into a little bit more detail and we want it to reflect the actual situation. And I think one of the things, this is my impression anyways, that we put the burden on the chiefs, which we should, because it's mm -hmm. going to be their staff, mm -hmm. to bring forward you know, what they want to see, but we need to a approve it. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. go ahead. And if I can add, I, I think, you know, this is still going to, of course, be draft, but when we get that PSC manual, yeah. I think that's going to help out a lot. Mm -hmm. right? It's going to be updated mm -hmm. and just be more, I think, direct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I see the role of the PSC is you're shaping the mission and the goals and the direction mm -hmm. for the police and fire departments, and then obviously we are hired to carry out that mission and direction as it relates to hiring, firing, and discipline, and promotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I someone help me with something? Because I'm a little stuck here with the, the difference between the commission shall determine the qualification for a position, and then here, the commission shall establish or what the criteria for selecting among applicants for positions of police service and fire. I, what is the difference there? So there's the qualifications of the people, and then there's the actual selection process. So I think about the command staff, how we had a presentation, and we had an oral board, and we had a white paper. Mm -hmm. So that is the selection process. So that's like basically all your recruitment steps. So when I see the nature of selection process, it's really you're, you're oh. approving and or establishing the different steps we take in making a hire. I think that's what I get from Yeah, that's how I I miss the selection the process, mm -hmm. the okay. title. Okay. okay. Good, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Add to. laughs> okay. At this point, I overview for chairing. I'm sorry, what did you say? At this point, I'm going to turn over the chair in the meeting to you. The to chair has to leave. Oh, as vice, oh, sure. As vice chair. <laughs> Thank, We're you. On this yep, Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. So now we're on section four, the appointment of members of the police service and fire service. Oh. <laughs> you said we currently do not follow this process at all, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest. <laughs> And that's what I wrote in there. Are we yeah. doing this? <laughs> hmm. And actually, can we go to the last sentence in the in section, in the last you bet. piece of chapter three? So it says, all examinations of any shall be conducted under the supervision of the commission, which may designate some more organizations and persons. So we do designate them. You guys, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, but that's sort of, that's where that um, ends, and then we get a list essentially out of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where we need to sort of pick up in the next section. So it is probably rewriting this entire mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess my gut kind of told me that we should probably review the statutes. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, 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 this, I mean, I'm curious why this is in here. And, you know, right. I'm looking to at the statutes right now. Okay. And um, they are um, broad. I mean, it doesn't go to the specific, uh, specific things that we've included in the handbook. Um, it doesn't use the word established for criteria. I was looking to see if it specifically used that word, if that, maybe that's where they found it from. But with regard to, it's very interesting with regard to um, the examination and the process, I think that um, 
that if everyone looks at this at some point and and sees how general it is and how it you know um, 62 let me go back up it's hard on my phone 6213 sub um, four. let me get down there yeah it's under sub four subordinates and it's four um, a talks about um, appointments um, should be made by promotion when possible, otherwise from an eligible list, um, provided by examination and approval by the board. Um, so then B talks about, no, actually it's C. It says, um, for the choosing of such lists, the board shall adopt and may repeal or modify rules calculated to secure the best service in the departments. These rules shall provide for examination of physical and educational qualifications and experience and may provide such competitive exam examinations as the board shall determine and for the classification of positions with special examination for each class. The board shall print and distribute the rules and all changes in them at city expense. That's sub C. And sub D goes on about the, the examination should be free and um, including uh, what it should include. Um, so there is some statutory um, things about the examination, which I'm not sure why they use certain wording in here that they did. But I didn't think of it, so when I read the statute, it certainly didn't think of these things were merited, or I shouldn't say merited, were necessitated. So it didn't seem like we needed to prepare the list. I'm sorry, are you talking about what they have in the handbook right now? Yes, exactly. Right, that's why I'm wondering where they got all of this from. That's, that's kind of why I was questioning yeah. about well, the people before that us. Or? You're asking the people before us. <laughs> right. Get that from? right. I don't know who was here when that happened. None of us. <laughs> so, exactly. So, we, I think we should just do it according to what it says there. And you're right, we don't do that. We yeah. don't do that. But in that, I think, is sufficiently vague. So what, what do we think for us mm -hmm. to give us, essentially, leeway to do what we're currently doing? Um, right. And I think that the process that we're doing is um, works and is a good partnership, actually, between mm -hmm. the two. Mm -hmm. um, and is in the spirit of uh, the overall um, uh, statute for the, uh, for the commission. Moreover, we're going to have legal look at this, and this is the section we probably just want to have them say. Can you read the statute? Make Absolutely. Sure yeah. Also, you know, it talks in uh, the statute about um, preference points and such like that. I think that that needs to make sure that it's, you know, it's very important and it needs to be correct. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's somewhere in here um, already about preference points. Because we don't give preference points. To Positions. Yeah, because it says veterans and their spouses shall be given preference points in accordance with 6308 sub 1 sub FM. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure just from my cursory look at this whether or not that's directly applicable to what we're doing right now. Maybe, but um, People that are currently employed within the department for any preference? No, I should backtrack. We give preference points at the essay questions. We have an application review and so if they do have military experience, we do give them additional points. Um, that help increase their score and their likelihood of getting to the interview. But it's... But we don't know if it's, it's uh, in cons consistent with right. the statute. Right. right. Well, going back to 4.01, we are agreeing that that does not reflect what we do. We have to rephrase or change that to reflect that we get the list from the police and fire and we review it and whatever and approve it. We could put it in a best, you know. I, I would even go one step further and just saying mm -hmm. um, perhaps we should take a shot at writing down in sections what we actually do now. Yeah. Um, come mm -hmm. back at the next meeting, maybe even just say, okay, is this what we actually do, guys? Mm -hmm. And then make sure that legal takes a close look at that when they do review it and compare that to statute. And I, we should probably include um, uh, there's two pieces in regards to preference. There was the um, there was the veterans piece, but then there was also internal um, in the department. There was something in the statute where, the where it said that it should be by promotion if possible. If possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I just we should just make sure that we're doing both of those. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, what 
the time weren't the preference points related to the law enforcement basic exam, the written exam? Is that where they where those points were supposed to be given? Typically because it's added to your civil service exam and basic yeah. exam. Basic yeah, because so that's where I was thinking where, yeah, and we don't obviously use the civil yeah. service exam any longer, so that's, that was only my, my only familiarity with, with the, the veterans preference points. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that we, we should definitely clarify to make sure that we're still mm -hmm. applying that. And the correctly. civil service exam may have been paying attention to it. Yes. <laughs> it may have caught that. It yes. Like, yeah, as part of that process. Yeah. <laughs> so you're suggesting that then this particular section we come up with the list of act, the actual things that we do in this particular process? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we don't do, I mean, this 4.02, again, there's things there that we don't do, um, and we do review the, the 403, we do, not every six months. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. you're right. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. have to really write this to what is right. actually happening. Right. So should we just do that, send our gray that list and have it if you want to send it ahead of time you can each one of you work on what exactly you're doing as of right now mm -hmm. for each section of four and then send it to me and then i can put them all together basically i and would then make we can a suggestion it. also if we could put what we would like to see yeah mm -hmm. um okay. and I'll, I'll just mention this like maybe you know we may want to be part of the interviews you know, uh, session with you, Chad, and I think we could think about, you know, also what we may want to see also. Absolutely. And then we could talk about it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we're all going to take a shot at this, the number four, mm -hmm. um, the commission may establish a period of probationary status for the position of the classes. We, we, don't, we, don't we don't currently have been involved in any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, one are you talking about? Number four. four. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but I guess I don't. Well, that's part of the contract, you know. It's, that's already right. defined in the CBA, so I don't. Right. That's another good thing to go back to. Mm -hmm. what Greg was here. The questions about mm -hmm. probationary status. Well. But I also think that Jeff brought up a good point that as you guys collect all of your thoughts on this particular section, to have legal just do a full mm -hmm. review and mm -hmm. evaluation of. How do we best incorporate the thoughts and wishes of the commission with what the, the statu statutes authorize? Right. Okay. Are we all clear then on what we need to do? <laughs> Everybody will have to do some um, work on its own and submit that list. Yeah, um, so to that end, I guess I would suggest that since that's the case, we should probably do section four and section five maybe next time rather than moving on to the Yes, I agree with you. you. Just because that's the other discussion. It's going to be a discussion, but it's also going to be probably the bulk of the planning and section five. I'm going to guess it's going to be the bulk of the work that we do. Oh, yes, promotion. <laughs> Discipline in this jersey. Yeah, those. Okay, we'll do that. We don't need a motion for that, or do we? I don't think we need, we're just doing discussion. this. Yeah, we're yeah. good. Yeah. So section four, we're writing what we currently do and what we would like to see happen, and sending right. that to Sarah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Section four. Okay. We were clear since we are moving right along. Then, what's the? Uh, are we done? What's the next thing on the agenda? What is the agenda? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're done with number six. Yep. And we did number seven. And we did number seven, so we're good. So, so what's the next one? Announcements? 
We need a second page. Okay, any announcements? No. I'm just going to ask a clarifying question during the announcements. I assume that our meeting now for February will move to the third Wednesday. Is that the plan? Oh my gosh. Okay. Did I miss that? I just want to make sure that we're all here at the same time. <laughs> So meetings will continue as every third Wednesday of the month. Now it's every third Wednesday. Starting in February. Yeah. Okay. So February nineteenth, it looks like. Yep. Oh. Um, I can add you to a meeting request if you'd like to. So if you have an email address, I can just get that on a calendar for you. I'll, I'll send it out to sure. all of you. I've got your email. So yeah. yeah. Well, duly noted that we'll be here on uh, the third Wednesday of every month from now on. Same time, right? 4.30? Same time. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Thank you so much. You guys work so hard. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> no, motion I'll make to a adjourn. motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> you guys have it. <laughs>